Okay, dudes, it's about time we get this a little video up and running. Uh, just for you guys who have been uh, requesting me to make a video on uh, on certain things, and um, I decided to make this into a uh, video guide for the Gambit system. And uh, as a request from one of my viewers from Twitch, he asked whether or not if I have if I'm going to make a Gambit system for a setup in the get of the game for you guys so you guys can actually at least know what you know setup you guys should be going for and what you guys should not be going for when you guys are putting your gambit system together so this is for those of you who are really new to the system and also new to the game itself so that way you guys can uh, kind of um, gauge where you guys should be heading for your gambits when you guys are actually playing the game although i think you guys can probably learn this fairly easily it's not too hard really but Sometimes you could get overwhelmed by and you guys probably don't know what to focus on in your gambits. So without further ado, we can go ahead and load. I'm gonna load a file where um I have access to all my gambits and stuff so you guys can see what you guys really need to focus on. So let's see here. Let's go to this one. So I'm gonna explain, you know, what the gambit system is. The gambit system is pretty much an automated system where you program uh ifs and else ifs. For your characters and i'm um, making them do mundane tasks that you usually don't do like for example uh you know cast shell protect uh, or anything like that or heal or use phoenix downs or raise you know whenever your party one of your party members are dead so it makes you do these mundane tasks by programming programming into the ai of the game for the characters to take action according to certain situations and um that's pretty much what it is and uh and this system itself is really good. You know, it's very well done. The only time you need to interfere is when there are times where you, when it gets really hard for the AI to take care of what it's supposed to do. Sometimes it takes care of everything, and sometimes it doesn't because of the fact that it kind of goes up and down depending on the situation itself, right? So, for example, the setup itself that I have here is meant to be universal and meant to get you through every part of the game, but there are still some points where you where you come along where you have to kind of tweak it to your own taste and also to your own preferences, nonetheless. And on this setup that I have right now is currently the setup for end game wise. But um, first, I'm going to show you guys how to set it up beginning wise, meaning that as you are starting out, you should be focusing on not too much on your gambits yet until like maybe midway through the game where it gets harder. So since it's early on, this is what you wanted to have it set up first. So um, I'm gonna use Vaughn as an ex no Balthier as an example. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, go ahead and set this up real quick for you guys, where uh, the beginning should look like and what it should look like. So if you have Balthier, if you're at the very beginning, you're gonna be stuck with Phoenix down until uh, until you get you know choose a job for Balthier or for anyone for. Ex for example, you know, Balthier is just an example, okay? This could be for anyone, to be in fact. So for most characters who are um, who are not a white mage or don't have white mage abilities, you should give them Phoenix Downs. No matter how you look at it, you're going to have to because they don't have access to rays or anything else. So giving, ac giving them access to Phoenix Down on their gambit as the first priority is a must. This is what you need to be, number one. When your ally status is KO'd or any to be in fact, you can just put ally any and um and if they get KO'd, you can technically give them the Phoenix down. So, but if you have access to that, you can go ahead and use if you have access to raise or any other spell like arise, you can go ahead and give that to that person because it's better to what to use MP than it is to waste an item. As items are very precious in this game, which they still are, you know, for the most in most JRPGs they are precious. So you don't want to waste them all unless you have a good supply, like 99 of a Phoenix, a Phoenix down just in order to use it all. So yeah. And then the second, you know, uh tier has, the second you know spell that I would say or I gamma you must set up is your healing spells. So for example, this should be either your second or your third, okay? For the most part. I recommend it having it, it as your number three priority. So just in case if anything weird happens to your characters, like for example, if, if a boss set, you know ends up using Reflect on you, you can totally get rid of the Reflect status and stuff right away or anything like that. Set it up for that, especially. 
And then, um, but for what I say, if, since you're start, starting off very early, use, make this as your second or third choice. Just in case if anything happens. Like, for example, if you have access to Cure, cool, sweet, go for it. That's the first spell you that some of your characters have access on, onto early on. Like, for example, Fran gets access to it early. Very early in the game. She's the first character you get in the game that has access to Cure. Or should I say Pinello as well. Pinello is another character, but by that point you don't have access to fix your gambits yet. So, but when you get to the point where you can fix your gambits, Fran will be the one that you get access to in order to use Cure. So you can have her set up with Cure at the get-go. And she has the uh, innate ability to be able to use Cure. So if you get her to her, if you give her her um, Archer class, she ha gets access to Cure. But overall, for the main setup, I recommend doing it this way. Have the person, you know, to get access to Phoenix Downward Rays. Just set that up throughout, for the most parts of the game, you're going to have to do that. And then put Cure if you have decided on your White Mage. If you do, make sure they have Rays. Because sooner or later, you will get access to that very quickly. Along with Cura and Kiraga and Kiraja later on, which is late in the game. But you will be able to get access to it soon. Well, not soon, but later at the late end of the game but for the first two spells like these two you get access to it very early so i recommend if you, since you're starting out this is the setup i would recommend these two don't worry about isunaga i have it there just because of the fact that if anything happens obviously you probably will get access to isuna which at this point if you do get access to isuna at any point in the game make that your second choice okay make your second priority because if you don't you might be not healing off any bad ailments whatsoever, right? Because what Isuna could do, it could heal, I think, almost every type of ailment except for stop and disease. And I think that's about it. Any other ailment, it will probably heal for sure. So I recommend having Isuna as your second choice would be the best thing. Although you can still make healing your second choice too. Because I recommend either second or third. And it doesn't really matter really how you want to set it up. So for me, my preferences, I'd rather have it where it's the second choice. But you don't have to. If you have your white mage to be that way, this is good already. This is good for the very beginning of the game until you get to probably near Gator Vagan or something like that of some sort where it gets really hard. So I recommend doing that. And then for your attackers, if you have any attackers, you know, the setup, I would recommend. If you get access to for your attackers, just make sure they have Phoenix down. And then if they have healing abilities, go ahead and give, the, give them as their second, third priority. But if they don't have access to that, make sure that they have access to potions. That's the biggest thing. Like, for example, high potions or potions. These are good early on for, for your attackers. So make sure that they have this kind of setup early on. And so you get to midway where you're going to switch it up a bit. And um, although most part... For, for your attackers, really you want them to focus on attacking than throwing out healing items for the most part. But if they have access to healing spells, it's good for them to become alternative healing healers in the game. So which is nice. I recommend that. But for the most part, you want them to really focus on attacking. So that's the big thing. So for example, my Ash has access to curing spells and she has access to some support spells. So I recommend if you have access to some support skills... Yeah, it's fine to give them to certain characters to kind of spread out the, uh, you know, support ability because of the fact that you don't want one character to focus too much on, on support for the most part. But at the same time, you might have to because of the fact that you want some one character to focus on attacking. So that's the big thing. So yeah, pretty much it. So if you want... So once you get this set up, you know, to the point where you get halfway through the game, right? Once you're there, if you have access to any of the support spells, which you should at, by that point, like, if you get access to Protect, Shell, or Faith or Bravery, although I think Faith or Bravery are going to be hard to come by because they're, like, probably, like, near, not near the end of the game, but late in the game, but you will get them. Although sometimes you might not even get them at all. So I recommend, as always, when you're playing this game, keep exploring. If you don't explore, you're not going to get these spells at all. These high-tier spells are only obtainable through treasure chests. Some of these high-tier spells are, you know, buyable. Like, for example, Kiraja can be bought. So yeah, but Renew, on the other hand, you have to find, which is very late in the game, near the end to be in fact. So I recommend it. So for the first part, so as you're midway through the game, right, you would want to have something like Protect on for your support. Get access to that right away if you do, if you don't at all, because sooner or later things are going to get harder. 
So for those of you who don't have, um, you know, any of the high tier spells for like Shelga and Protectga, I recommend using Shell and Protect. Those are the two best spells that you can get at that point in the game, I think, halfway through the game. These are the two spells I would recommend. So if any of you healers that are magic users, any magic users also, I recommend get the Technique Charge. If their MP is down less than 10%, they will start using Charge and being able to recover MP. And don't worry about the fact that it that it doesn't work most of the time, which it doesn't really. But uh, it's a 50-50 chance, meaning that you get free MP restored if you charge. So any MP, any magic users or support users that uses MP a lot, they can use charge and it will help them out a lot. Like the, I think the four jobs in this game that have access to that is the White Mage, Battle, Battle Time Mage, Red Battle Mage, and the Black Mage. These are the four jobs that get access to charge. So make sure you learn those and get that technique too because it's a very crucial ability to use when you need free MP. So that's another thing you want to set up. Set that up like as the fifth, yeah, fifth option in my opinion in order to start, you know, getting MP back because you would want to make sure you have MP before you start buffing your characters. But for healing wise, yes. But if you don't have enough MP for the healing, obviously they'll skip down straight to the charge, which is nice. So I recommend doing that. So halfway through the game, you will probably get access to charge as well. So I recommend that you get these on as well and start buffing your characters out in the game because it's going to get harder from there. Although you don't really need it really much unless if you're going to be fighting against optional bosses in my opinion although it's great to have this set up right then and there although you can technically survive on the first three choices here throughout the whole game when you beat the game but when you want to do the optional stuff you will need to start relying on to these abilities very soon and then when you get to the end game or late in the game i recommend to say not end game really but late you want you will probably get access to these which is faith and bravery these are very good buffing skills for your mage and your attackers especially bravery for your attackers which are very powerful indeed so i recommend having that set up like this right now would be a good idea by that point this is how you sh it should look when you get to the late parts of the game and then when you ever get to to the let's say end parts of the game like the end game stuff you should now be able to get access to Protecta and Shelga. So what you really want to aim for now by this point is to have at the at the end game stuff is to get access to Protecta and Shelga, which you will have to look for in chests to get. The moment you get them from these chests, they they should be 100%. So once you get them, this is how your setup should look like for the most part. And then uh, you should want to make sure you want to switch to Kiraja, especially by the late game. And then um, if you have access to Isunaga, great. You can technically, I think, buy this, I think. So, don't really remember. But you won't get access to Arise at all until late in the game. So once you do get to Port of Balfenheim, you should get access to Arise by that point. And uh, you, this is how you should set it up by this point. So with Kiraja as your main healing spell to use for healing. And then everything else, you know, falls down like this. And that's pretty much how you would want to actually go for when it comes to healing for your white mage. So, but for your time mage, if it's early on, now that we're done with the white mage, right? Time for your time mage. Your time, your time, your battle time mage, or time battle mage, let's call it, has access to time skills and also green spells. Let's call it as well. And um, they get access to bubble, float, and haste, which are good spells including decoy which is another good spell for you know taking the aggro f you know from your party members so which is nice so my boss right now is the time mage of my group and he's also a knight giving him access to kiraja although technically he only gets access to kira i think as a time mage if i remember let me make sure to make sure let me check to make sure that i'm correct on this i could be wrong entirely wrong about him but i'm pretty sure he had access to yeah so as the um, as a time age he gets access to it so to raise and cure so if he does have access to that give that to him as well as a secondary healer in the game but if you give him the night job which is a nice combination of the two he gets access to kiraja so early on in the game you don't get access to anything at all for uh for bosh or for your battle time age but Sooner or later on, as you get through the game, you will get access to Kira for that particular set 
the skills. If you do get like I say, Balius, I think that was this the char the uh, Esper that is unlocked for needed in order to. Oh no, Audra Malik, my bad. So it's Audra Malik that you'll probably need to get in order to get access to this set of s abilities for Bosch or for your Time Mage. So. And um, once you do, you should set it up accordingly. You can get Aldermatic, I think, kind of uh, like near halfway through the game. Although technically you can get it pretty early too. So once you do, this is the setup you would want to have um, for your time age. So, and I disregard this stuff. This is how you would want your setup to be early on in the game. If you do get Aldermatic and your time age set up already. And, um, your time age will be pretty much healing and also throwing rays as well, which is nice. But if they don't, always, as always, put a phoenix down in place of that. And a high potion in place of that. If you don't have access to that right then and there early on. So once you do, and then later on midway through game, I think, you're going to get access to haste. And maybe float, I think. So if you get access to that, you would want to set that up at that point. Although, I don't think you'll get access to Bubble just yet. Although, you could probably get it based early on, I think. If you probably can, you probably can buy You can buy this from the actual clan store, okay? That's where the spell is. But your rank has to be at a, at a certain spot in order to get access to it. So, I recommend doing that. So, if you don't have... By that point, you should have access to these three spells. Halfway through the game, I'd say. And then also maybe if you get access to decoy, which you should by that point, I think, halfway in, you should be able to get this. And this is how your setup should be. Your party leader, whoever you control, should be the decoy while the others will be busy on buffing. And which is what this is all about. So I recommend getting access to that as much as possible and early as possible too if you can. So for the most part, this is pretty much midway through the game now for this setup. And then it also works to the point where you get to the end parts of the game, the late parts of the game. So if you get access to the late parts of the game, great. This is where you should be at at this point. So for the most part, that's pretty much how it would be. And um, also by that point, you should get access halfway through the game too with charge as well. And also this is good for late game as well. So I recommend having this set up for late game. And then also at the end game too, this should be fine. But if you have access to Heska, which I'd say you can only find, same thing with Haste, you can only find as well. You can't buy Haste, but you can get Haste and and you can only get those two spells, Haste and Haste, from Treasure Chest. I recommend it. Because by the time you get to uh, Erupt Village, you should, you should get access to Haste, which is halfway through the game. So I recommend having that set up right away to speed up your character's attack powers and everything. And speeding up their sp attack speed, I mean, not attack power. But you can speed up their attack speed and making them faster in battle and react faster in battle as well. So by that point, you should get access to these things by this point. Halfway and mid and also near the end of the game. So late in the game, you should get access to it. And this should work very well in the game as well for, for going against optional bosses as well. So if you do get access to Heska, make sure that's the part where you should aim for. So by the end of the game... Near the end, to be in fact, when you get to go straight through, you know, all the optional bosses and everything. Yeah, you want to actually aim for this for your time mage. And I recommend the three best jobs, in my opinion, to have together right now is your white mage, time mage, and your attacker. Your attacker can be any job as long as they focus on attacking. While the other guys will be focused on supporting and healing for the most part. So I recommend doing that having it like set up like that for the most part so if you don't have that set up like that you might have some trouble but for the most part it should help you through most of the game and also through the harder parts of the game and so yeah like i said this is pretty much the setup you would really want with your ta your time mage and your your white mage for the most part and uh, any other setup i'd say you can set it up accordingly to how you want really like for example uh, your attackers can be set up in any way you want really it doesn't really matter too much but i still recommend to have them prioritize um phoenix down as their first choice of bringing back the dead because of the fact they don't have access to rays or anything but if they do for example like uh, ash who is a bushi she might get access to to that spell whatsoever i think as a bushi as a bushi for any bushi job she sh they should get access to at least 
one or two healing spells, but I don't think so. But she does have access to um, innate cure spells, which is nice. So I recommend that. So let's see here. If I think she does not have access to um, any white mage spells, so except for cure. So that's the thing that she gets access to, and um, which is nice. I recommend it. She gets innate cure, so which is really good. But if you give her a red battle mage, or if you have a red battle mage, I recommend set that up as a secondary healer too, which is nice because they get access to Kuraga, which is a very good spell. Although the only thing is that it targets one character only, so. But then again, it's really good to have another healer on this on on the side just in case if the other two fail. So it's nice to have that. And Penel uh, doesn't have access to uh, the higher tier healing spells, but she get access to cure very early on in the game as you get her back into the party. So I recommend have her set up for cure and stuff later on. But later on, as you get through to the game, halfway through, you want to set her up for HP potions and stuff like that, okay? And um, I think that's about it for the most part for Gambit-wise. Like they say in the game, set up the, you know, your stuff first, you know, your uh, your strategic stuff, and then focus on attacking afterwards because you want to make sure that everybody's buffed up and tankable throughout the battle. And uh, once you do, you should be fine. And then for, I think as a monk, you know, for monks, they can be used, they can be uh, set up as a sec as an alternative healer too, which is nice, but the problem with a monk having those healing spells is the fact that they can't really get their MP back. So if you want the monk to have that, to be able to heal, you want to make sure they have ether as possible as one of their setup gambits, okay, for self MP healing. Because of the fact that if they don't have MP, they can't use any of their spells. But for the most part, I recommend using the monk as an attacker over everything else really. Because um, it's better that way anyways because of the fact that they can't really heal their MP except by using an item called Ether, Which you don't really get access to buy at all until you're ranked high enough in the clan for your uh, hunting stuff. So I recommend don't really set this up until you can get access to Ethers by buying them. You can totally get access to them by stealing them and stuff, but it, you get a very small amount, which is very, very little throughout the game. So I recommend wait until you get enough the, enough chances, well, enough ranks to buy Ether. Once you do, you can go straight to the clan store in the Mutu Bazaar and buy it from there. So until then, that's pretty much it. So every attacker I recommend is to have it set up normally, like the way how I set up with Fran here. You know, if they have access to cure, cool, give it to them. But if they don't, set it up with a potion, like high potion here. So I recommend doing that because of the fact that they don't have access to uh, healing, they don't have access to um, charge at all either. So it's kind of a moot thing to kind of put it on. So I recommend usually have them set up like this early on. As always, have your attacker set up like this. They shouldn't be focusing on healing at all. They should only be focusing on bringing back the dead though, as the first priority choice. For every character in this game, make them focus as as they are, as I have it right here. Focus, make them focus on curing the dead. Pretty much it, bringing back your dead characters that you really need them to. So that's pretty much it, that's priority number one. Although, like I said, this doesn't always work out the way as it is intended for the most part. But, like I said, you still will have to tinker with it along the way for the certain boss battles. So, that's pretty much it for my uh, Gambit Guide here. It's very easy to follow. It's not that hard. Just make sure you guys know. I have broken it down to, for the two main support jobs that I recommend, is White Mage and Battle Time Mage. Or Time Battle Mage. So, that's pretty much it for the setup. So like I said, have it like this. This is what you want to aim for at the end game for your white mage. And then for your time battle mage, this is what you want to aim for at the end as well. So if you decided on your second jobs already, cool. That would be great. You can go ahead and modify it to how you want it for your secondary jobs and everything. So that's pretty much it for my gambit setup for my way of playing throughout this game. Because I technically have Balthier and Bosch as the main party members. Which is why they're level 99, as you guys saw earlier, right? Because they're my support characters that I use the most. And um, the reason why is because of the fact that I like the characters. And also, they have good stats because they could tank. Which is nice. So I recommend you know, using these two if you want to. You can copy my exact setup for my parties if you want to. But you don't have to. But I recommend. 
So as I have broken down you know, accordingly to the two jobs, early on, mid, and late game, and then there's also end game by that point, which is a fourth option. So like I said, pretty much focus on that, and you should be pretty much good throughout the whole game. And that should pretty much get you through most of the optional boss battles. Although I recommend you might want to tinker with it accordingly to the boss you're fighting, okay? So until then guys, this is Nozumu10 here. And uh, feel free to watch me at Twitch if you guys want to uh, know what I'm doing next for the games that I'm playing. So and uh, find me there at twitch.tv slash Nozumu10. So until then guys, I'll see you later on the next video. Alright? And have fun messing with your gambits.